Just say live whenever Going it says live. live. You're live. Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Very first live cook. Me, Cabela, and Mrs. Backwoods are out here on a very stormy night. Uh, and we're going to cook a top secret dish from uh, Disney World, which is right up the road from where we're at here. And it's going to be awesome. All right. So y'all stay tuned. And hey, chime in with your comments. Mrs. Backwoods is actually back behind. I can't do all this stuff by myself. So Mrs. Backwoods is back behind the camera and on the, uh, the comments over there. So keep them respectful if you don't want to get kicked out. So any of our members are chiming in there. Y'all can, uh, she'll make you moderators uh, for the chat there. Try to help her out a little bit. And we got Miss Cabela. She's been out there in the rain running around. She's all wet. And she's... Now she just wants to chew on me, as all puppies do. So, for right now, let's let Mrs. Backwoods kind of scroll down here and look at some of the uh, ingredients while I go wash my hands, because i got a dog chewing on me. Showing up. Yeah. I want to see more of the puppy in the videos. All right. So, um, apparently, you know, a lot of every, Disney's been shut down, all right, since this whole COVID 19, all that kind of crap, all this set, set in. So all the people have been working out there, you know, for all these years, very first time they ever been furloughed from the job. And I guess this, um, this sandwich is like, kind of like world famous and, um, where they serve it over there is in kids world at the management at the magic kingdom, or as all the Disney's workers call it the tragic kingdom, because they hate working there. Okay. And uh, Mrs. Backwoods will confirm that, right? Never worked a day in the Tragic Kingdom. Is it Tragic Kingdom? Tragic Kingdom. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, all the Disney workers call it Tragic Kingdom. Uh, all right. So, we're going to go through the ingredients really, really quick here. It's, it's not a lot of stuff, Okay. First, you're going to need cream cheese. You're going to need some salt. You're going to need some garlic. Now, I think the original uh, chef's version used garlic salt. We don't have garlic salt because Mrs. Backwoods doesn't like salt, so I buy them separately. You're going to need some shredded mild cheddar cheese. You're going to need some mild cheddar cheese slices. And you're going to need some provolone cheese. Like I said, good bread. Uh, some mayo. And this ain't an original deal. All right? You know, I can't do anybody's original recipe. We got some cherry wood smoked ham. So I'm going to have to make mine ham and cheese. And we got some cream. All right. So the original recipe was for like uh, four sandwiches. Tonight we're only going to make one just for demonstration purposes. So the first thing we're going to make is going to be the filling that's going to go inside the sandwich. And uh, here's the ingredients you're going to need for that. You're going to need about two tablespoons of softened cream cheese. We've got them in the bowl. You can see that on the screen there, Miss Backwood. Yes. Yeah. All right, and let's open this uh, 
this cream up here. You know, this camera has a lot wider angle than my normal camera. But you're going to need a little bit, and we can adjust this as we go. A little bit of heavy cream. And we're going to need a couple tablespoons of the shredded cheddar cheese. Man, it's already, y'all can hear, uh, y'all probably hear that thunder in the background. It's already rained here like twice, I mean, monsoon rain here. Uh, twice a day. And it uh, sounds like it's coming again. And then you're going to need a little pinch of salt. Okay, now that's about a teaspoon of salt. And uh, Cabela's now running around playing. And we're just going to take that and we're going to mix it up really good. Now, the original recipe that I've seen, they actually put this in the food processor. And But you're, you know, if you're out at camp, you're not going to have food processor and likely you're not going to even have electricity at all. So we're going to do it old fashioned way. We're going to add a little bit more cream. And we want this to be kind of nice and smooth. So uh, do we have any? Let me give a couple shout outs while we're doing this. Who we got there in the uh, in the chat, Mrs. Backwoods? We got uh, Charles Graham, Mike Cabandum, uh, Texas Style Barbecue and Cuisine. Hey, Seth Johnny's in the chat. Darla A. Darla, I appreciate you, Darl. Darla A. She's one of our members. You can go ahead and click the three buttons beside her name, make her a moderator also. Right out beside her name, you should be able to make her a moderator as usual. I believe she is a moderator. Oh, she's turn. She's showing up in blue. Uh, it's her yes, name. Yeah. Okay. She's blue. So yeah, Darla, you're a, you're a moderator as usual. So I didn't I didn't know if we had to do that every time or whether once I made you one, you're there constantly. But yeah, Darla, a hey, yes, keep keep a keep an eye out, Darla, for the uh, troll. You guys heard that, right? All right, so we're going to get that pretty well incorporated. <coughs> and uh, we want it to be kind of the consistency of peanut butter somewhere along those. So, uh, oh, sorry, you got to hear me sneezing. I do not have COVID. I can. <laughs> Uh, allergies. Um, so, all right, that's that part's done. So the next thing we need to do is make our bread topping. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to go in. It's uh, minced garlic. That's about a half a teaspoon, right into the bowl there. A uh, pinch of salt pinch and then uh, about a tablespoon of mayo right in there all right and this is backwards is going to try to respond to your comments there and run the camera at the same time while Cabela's running around here she's not learned she's not quite so scared of the lightning yet and what I like to do is, is I kind of like to crush that garlic too in the side of the bowl once I got it in there in the mayo just kind of crush it and that's going to grind it up just a little bit more like I said we're only making one sandwich tonight so if you're going to make multiple of these you're going to need a lot more ingredients so that's pretty much done alright so now we're getting ready to select some cast iron, which we're definitely going to need to do this right. We're going to need some cast iron. So this backwoods is showing you the cast iron wall over here, and there we got uh, several things to choose from. There's a uh, old Griswold chicken fryer up there. If that's uh, probably the most most valuable pan I have, that's from the early 1900s. Here's an old uh, lodge. Uh, probably from the 50s or 60s. 
Here's another Griswold right here, a little bit older, that's a small box. Uh, we got the Lodge um, Carbon Steels pan over there, that's modern pan. We got a, a old Griswold copy there. And of course we got some black lock over there. So while uh, we're getting a fire going over here, y'all throw some comments down and uh, tell us and let us know which pan you think we need to do it in. So this is uh, back what's been following me in the camera here. We're gonna go ahead and fire up the uh, Concord uh, double burner propane stove. Now, I was going to try to do this on the uh, on open fire for you, but weather just ain't permitting that kind of deal. All right, so we're going to get that thing going up. So we'll give you guys a minute to uh, oop, drop the mayo jar. So yeah, anyway, so throw it down in the comments below, um, which pan, we'll give you all a few minutes to chime in here, see which pan you want to use. The one with the gateway, the gate, wall, gate mark. Um, old Lodge skillet, you've been thunderstruck. Carla says Griswold. <sighs> two two Griswolds. Fancy Bob skillet, spider skillet, one with the gate mark, two gate marks. All right. So anyway, I think that you know. Spider skillet. I know a lot of you guys love seeing that gate mark uh, spider skillet, but I don't think it's quite big enough to do this sandwich. And then I, from everything I found, you know, from reading that, that this old gate mark, even though you can see Griswold on it, in the bottom is probably a copy. Somebody made a mold from a, a Griswold and poured that. I don't know how long ago. So, all right. So, we got Spider Skillet and Griswold. We're going to go ahead and pull out the uh, the newer Griswold Skillet. Let's go ahead and, uh, you know, we got we got four down rain on earlier. We'll go ahead and wipe that out a little bit. Just make sure that's nice and clean. Been hanging up here on the wall. And we're outside here, all right, guys. So make sure that's nice and clean and, uh, you know, that old Grizz is perfectly, perfectly um, smooth on the inside. Let's go ahead and get that over there on the stove. And he's looking for the stargazer. She doesn't see it on the wall. Oh, well, hang on a minute. Who's that? Becky, Becky Dupree. Okay. So talk to Becky while I go get the stargazer. Because <laughs> stargazer. All right, so Becky, that stargazer would have been a great choice, also. Uh, this one nowadays, the fuel company, the stargazer, uh, the black lock that I smoothed out and sanded down. Uh, I'll stay in the house now. This is my daily user. And that would have been a great choice, actually, Stargazer. But today we wanted to try to stay with, um, you know, the antique skillets. And if uh, anyone, any one of y'all guys want to see how the Stargazer is holding up, I am getting a little loss of the seasoning around the edges there. And here comes the storm again. But at any rate, that could be expected with those premium smooth pans. And hopefully you guys can still hear me. Um, the rain beating on the roof. You might be able to get this in. I'm not sure. If it starts raining sideways like it did I don't know, earlier today. 
twice? Maybe not. So, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start assembling the sandwich. Um, grab us a couple pieces of bread here. Pepperidge Farms oatmeal bread I'm using. Now, you can use any kind of bread that you like. Um, we're kind of on a lower carb diet around here, so we've been trying to choose breads that are um, have more fiber. That way the net carbs are lower. So first thing we're going to do with the sandwich um, is going to go ahead and put... I'm going to try to open this. Oh, boy. It's coming, guys. This would be the uh, thunderstorm live stream. Okay. One side, we're going to put in two slices of cheddar. Put those right on our slice. Billard Winter says lightning will help cook it faster. Yeah, that would be, yeah, like <laughs> instantaneously, like a million degrees or whatever the lightning is. Uh, it's like, I know it's a lot. Not sure exactly how many millions of degrees that is. But other side, uh, getting the, on the camera. On your just, screen. The assembly. Are you getting the, uh, imp, the, you see that on the? No, they're seeing it. Okay, good. All right, everybody see it. That's great. So we put it on the, the two different uh, cheeses on each side. Now we're going to go ahead and spread that mixture we made with the cream cheese, the cheddar, and the cream and salt right over the top of the cheese, just like that. Probably made a little bit more than we. This probably would have made two sandwiches amount I made there. So I'm gonna spread that right over the top. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the sandwich together. All right. So actually, I forgot I was gonna do this sandwich. Let's pull that back off there real quick. Go ahead and put some of that cherry wood smoke uh, pan. This is my little twist on the original. Thought it would be much better with some ham on it. Uh, so with mine, since I got the ham on there, I'm going to go ahead and put a little. So here's where I'm deviating from the, the uh, original recipe. Another storm uh, off the other side of us. And so this is the uh, thunderstorm Disney grilled cheese sandwich. All right, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and put that together. Where's the bacon? Uh, yeah, I know. I know. It would be awesome with bacon, but we did put ham on it. That's bacon's cousin, right? got bacon's cousin on there so one thing i didn't bring out yet is any kind of oil in that pan because we have this mayo garlic mix and that has that's everybody knows everybody knows that um Everybody knows that mayo is egg and oil. All right. So we're going to go ahead and spread that on the side of the bread. Let's uh, put that down there. Show you that. Just took the back of the spoon, coated that bread completely. That mayo and garlic salt mixture. Like I said, uh, I think the original recipe was garlic salt. All right. 
So that uh, that pan feels really good in the background there. And uh, maybe Mrs. Backwoods can go get me a hot pad for this pan. And uh, I might have to move the camera just a little bit for you to get that uh, pan. All right, so the sandwich is ready. Miss Backwoods also could bring me a spatula, which I forgot to bring out there. So, you know, it's a live cook, so, you know, might not have necessarily set up for this uh, big one. Yeah, big, wide spatula. So, I'm going to go ahead and take our big old spatula. I think our pan is nice and hot now. Got that. And you won't, don't want your pan too hot either. So you don't want to burn your bread before your cheese melts. So, I'm, I'm going to actually give that just a minute. And maybe if we don't get struck by lightning... Give that just a little bit to chill down. Uh, if we did that, it would probably Thomas. Who said? Who was that? That was Thomas Martin. Thomas. Yeah, Parmesan on there would probably burn on us before uh, we had a chance to get it nice and uh, round off. So. How's our frame looking there, Mrs. Backwoods? We're good, right on the grill. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it down with that mayo side down on the grizz wall. All right. I kind of, I kind of scooted it off a little bit off the fire there, let it cool down a little bit. I don't want it to get too hot. I don't want to burn that garlic that's in that mayo. So after it gets down on there, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and coat the other side of the bread with the mayo garlic mixture. Question. Okay. My name's no object for a family of four. What brand and size cast iron pan slash recommend? I'm looking at starting to build a set, looking for three to four pieces to start with. All right, that's a great question. Great question, and I get that question all the time. So you're just getting into cast iron, and you want to know what pieces to get. So here's the one Biggest tip I can give any of you guys that are watching out here right now is to buy good cast iron to start with. You know, don't waste your money on the Walmart junk crap that's over there in big lots. Uh, any of the stuff that's made in China has got tons and tons and tons of impurities in those cast iron. Most of it's made from recycled cast iron that's sent from America over to China and they Melt it down and make the cheap cast iron. Okay? They make cheap ass cast iron with it, and you're not going to be satisfied. It comes to you really, really rough, really, really bad forging. Yeah, it's 10 bucks, but you're not going to be happy with it. It's going to take you years and years to ever get it seasoned. It's still going to rust on you from all the impurities that are in it. So if you're going to buy cast iron, I would. I would say before you um, keep my eye on the sandwich over here, I don't want it to overcook. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that guy. It's already got quite a bit brown on it. Um, I would suggest buying a good, at least made in America. If you're going to buy a rough cast iron, buy a lodge. 
you know, if, you, if you're on a budget, buy the lodge. If you can save your money up, buy the fuel company or Stargazer or one of those that's already comes from the factory smooth. And that's going to become a family heirloom for you guys. It's going to last you your whole life, and you can pass that down to your kids. It's going to be really, really a great, great uh, cooking item for you for a long, long time. Hopefully, you guys can still hear me. I mean, it's like pouring down rain, thunder and lightning, and it getting worse. So, at any rate, if you can afford it, go with the American made uh, Stargazer or Fuel Company cast iron. I have both of those pans. I have two Fuel Companies and one Stargazer, and they've been the uh, best pans. Now, Here's the other thing. If you can't afford to lay out that $100 plus for any of those, go out and check out your local antique store and see if you can find some of the old lodges keeping yard sales. I bought two nice old lodges from yard sale for $10. That's $5 a piece. Uh, one of them I have hanging on the wall here. I bought for $5. Uh, yard sale. Uh, people buy them they don't really know what they are they don't know how to take care of them um and so forth so yard sale flea markets garage sales um antique malls we uh me and that's um me and sylvia is when we go travel around that's one of our little side trips every time is go to the local antique mall and search out cast iron and especially old cast iron that's smooth. Sometimes you can find really good deals. You know, some of them old Griswolds and stuff can get pretty expensive, but, you know, if you go buy the modern cast iron, you know, like Fuel Company and Stargazers and all that, they're going to cost you 100, 100 plus. Sometimes you can find an old Griswold for 50 or $60. So that's a pretty good deal. All right. <coughs> so Sylvie's got another question. Do you do factory finish on the Dutch ovens or do you do the Dutch? Okay, so somebody's asking, do I use the factory finish on Dutch ovens or whether I smooth them out? I do not smooth out Dutch ovens at all because we're not doing like eggs and stuff like that in Dutch ovens. We're mainly just braising or baking or doing something that you know takes a longer period of time so dutch ovens i have not touched a single one of my dutch ovens we leave the factory finish in them uh it's just a different kind of cooking in a dutch oven than you're doing in a skillet so yeah we don't we don't touch the uh dutch ovens at all so uh we'll see if sylvia because I forgot to, to uh, bring out a plate. So she can run inside real quick and uh, get us a plate. Uh, if you can get one of our display plates uh, out from under there. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. I mean, it's like, it is freaking, I mean, it's coming, getting worse by the minute. Actually, the uh, rain is already starting to blow under here. We're going to have to start moving some stuff back here. You guys are seeing this live as it's happening, all right? Seeing this live as it's happening. So, yeah, it's already blowing under the uh, under the porch here, right into the skillet, actually. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and pull the skillet off there, all right? Turn that fire off. And it's getting all nice and milky. See how the other side looks. Not quite ready on the other side. Maybe we'll have to fire that back up and move it. We're gonna have to move it. It's gonna it's gonna totally suck if I can't finish this guy for you. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but Rain is blowing all the way under the porch. 
So we're going to have to uh, move everything back. But you know what? I think at this point, we're just going to have to uh, go with what we got here. And I see that the, uh, you see that okay? Oh, we don't want a soggy sandwich. So yeah, we got to protect the computer. Uh, just got a new computer, it cost $900, so. Got the of it there, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the sandwich on out of there. Oh man, that looks, I tell you what, smells awesome. Absolutely smells awesome. Good or bad about the Overmont Dutch oven? All right, let's uh, let's talk about the Overmont Dutch oven. Um, I have a video complete review of the Overmont Dutch oven on our channel. After this renders out, I'll try to leave you the link down below. I just used the Overmont actually yesterday to do uh, fried chicken, which it works fine for a vessel to do, you know, fried foods and all that. But as far as the way it works with our normal kind of Dutch oven cooking, it's terrible. The lid, the lid design is, is terrible. Okay. Um, it's also made in China. Also made in China. Comes with a very rough finish compared to Lodge. Um, but it works fine if you just want to use it to boil something in or do deep frying or whatever. But the Overmont Dutch oven, I do not recommend uh, unless you're on a really, really tight budget. You can't afford anything else. I would, I would pick the... The uh, backwoods, uh, the backwoods, uh, made in China stuff from Academy Sports, over the top of the duck, the uh, Overmont, because of that lid design. The, the, the top rim is only like this big. A lot of issues with the coals and ashes falling off of it. I had so go back and go back to our channel page, check out that uh, video. So we did about a year ago on the Overmont, and uh, you'll see how you'll just see how it went back then, you know. So anyway, question. Okay, we got another question. John Becky Dupree, when you fry chicken, what do you do with the oil? Recycle it or throw it? Okay, Becky's asking about the uh, chicken fry grease. Now, if I know I got, we just did that yesterday. We just did. Fried chicken yesterday afternoon, then I came back home and I cooked the rest of the chicken that we had left over in the same oil. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, you put that lid back on top of that heavy Dutch oven, it's going to keep that pretty nice for you. I wouldn't keep it over more than about four or five days because you got that chicken, you got the rendered fat from the chicken that's also in that oil. And it will turn rancid on you after a period of time. So give it the old sniff test. You know, if anything uh, smells a little bit funky, then don't use it again because if it smells funky before you start, it, you're, that's going to uh, pick up that smell into whatever you're cooking with it. Uh, two, three days. Two, three days. You can keep it. Uh I've even cooked like chicken on at one time and then cook and deep fry something else the next day or two in the same grease with as long as you keep that lid on. But and try to keep it a cool place, like bring it in the house air conditioning, that's gonna help. Uh, but two or three days after that, 
it's just, um, you know, I wouldn't use it just to, because I wouldn't want my next dish to be ruined for, for rancid oil. Okay, so I'm going to send Mrs. Backwoods out to get me a knife real quick, and she can get my Dal, new Dalstrong, a new Dalstrong knife. That we got a review coming up on this really uh, soon here. I've already filmed the video, just haven't had a chance to get it um, edited, so I wanted to show you guys real quick that are here in the, in the live stream. Uh Folks over at Dalstrong sent me uh, sent me email said take your pick from our uh, our entire inventory and if you've watched my channel long enough you know we use a cleaver a lot we use a chef knife a lot so this new one is a actual uh, hybrid between a chef knife and a cleaver. And I seen the shape of it and I'm like, you know what? That looks pretty daggum awesome right there. It's got a Japanese super steel port, uh, Damascus, uh, 67 layer stainless steel outer sheath on it. The workmanship and everything is beautiful on it. Try to leave you a link down in the description below where you can uh, find that. So I've used it a couple of times now and it is a awesome, awesome knife. All right. So what we're going to do now is go down here and cut the sandwich. So hopefully uh, Mrs. Backwoods can, can uh, move the camera. And we're going to show a uh, sandwich, which is nice and melty. I'm going to try to cut that into four, four pieces. I'm going to play it there. I'm going to cut it one way. And I'm going to cut it the other way. And it's mm, just super, super creamy. Pick up a piece of it there. You guys want a bite of that. I know you do. Well, let's try it. Oh, my God. That is delicious. So now I know why this grilled cheese is so famous. Do you like the knife? Somebody wants to see the knife. Show the knife. Well, again. So somebody wants. And the brand of the knife again. Uh, the brand of the knife is Dow Strong, D A L S T R O N G. You can go to Dow Strong Knife or DowStrong.com. They have some really cool designs over there too. They have the one called Gladiator. You know, that's more like looks like a. Uh, Stuff you might see from, you know, like Road Warrior or something like that. Dow Strong Knives, very, very meticulously, I mean, the, all their knives are engraved on the blade, on the uh, end of the handle. They got a copper insert in the handle there. And uh, the handle itself is made out of a special like a fiberglass-like material, somewhere between fiberglass and like carbon steel. Uh, no, uh, carbon fiber. It's, uh, 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 it says right here on the blade, um, it's an AU, like an AU-10S Japanese 
super steel core is sharpened at like a six degree angle. So it's like, like a scalpel, the cutting surface. Um, and then wrapped in, like I said, Damascus, 67 layers of stainless. This one has, they call it, um, they call it the uh, tsunami finish on that Damascus steel. Has a really nice weight to it. Comes with a, uh, grab that really quick here for you. Comes with a, uh, a hard polymer case to keep it uh, safe while you're, you know, stored it in the drawer or whatever. And it has a little keeper, a little pin, a little pin right there that keeps it in the sheath so the sheath doesn't fall off for you. So, yeah, um, definitely the nicest knife I've ever owned. And I think they probably have 60 different products that they sell. Everything from classic designs all the way up to that Gladiator series, which is like a more modern design. Let's get another bite of that. Hmm. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I just might eat all this right here in front of you. <laughs> Only thing I would have changed there is I would have probably left... Uh, little less salt in that filling on the inside. I put two pinches in there. That was probably a little much. But because that ham brought over some, some more salt, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. Hey, you I only got a quarter of it there. Well, I know that's traditionally uh, served with grilled cheese. Um, and that's how they serve it at Disney, too. It's with a little, little small uh, bowl of tomato soup. Um, this one didn't really turn out super crispy like it should be. And uh, I think that's just because obviously it's 100% humidity out here. That's not going to be the case when they make it in a restaurant. But it was probably nice and crispy when we pulled it off the, off the pan, but sat here for a little while. And uh, it probably... Blew some rain on the pan while we were trying to bring a maggot over here. Can't control the weather when you're cooking outdoors. All right, guys. Fire in the swamp instead of salt. Yeah, we could have used some fire in the swamp on that also. But I'm trying to stay with the original recipe. It says how bad do you miss regular bread? I don't miss regular bread that much. Um... Actually, sometimes when I'm out, uh, you know, doing my job, and uh, sometimes I'll actually stop at McDonald's because it's the only place I can get lunch. I'll get a McDouble or a McChicken, and I'll only eat half the bun. So I'll take half the bun off, so at least I'm lowering the amount of carbs I'm taking in. So I'll just use half the bun. I'll flip it over. Eat it. I'll do the same thing with the... Uh, with a breakfast biscuit, I'll usually take the bis both sides of the biscuit off and just eat the middle. But, yeah, I mean, you can miss uh, start missing bread. But I've really transitioned over the past year, year and a half, that we've kind of been on a lower-carb diet over to the higher-grain 
uh, breads or higher, you know, fiber breads. I still can't stand whole wheat bread. I don't care what you say. But some of the other ones they're making now, like the oatmeal bread we're using now, and some like seven grain, stuff like that, I can tolerate them. I mean, I do love regular old bread, especially PB&J with that. But at any rate, um, so we're going to let, right now, we're going to let Mrs. Backwoods comes up here. She's probably going to say it's just too salty and take a little bite of the sandwich. I said I might have got a, an extra pinch of salt in there that she probably won't like, but most most all you other guys will really like it. So let me go, go run the camera and she'll bite. Don't you just love eating late at night? <laughs> yeah, well, it's just a nibble. It's very creamy, like unlike any other grilled cheese sandwich you ever had. You're right, the ham is salty. But it's good. No. Yeah. But to be fair with that, she is very very, very sensitive to salt. So be careful with the salt there. You know, this uh, recipe was developed for the masses. Okay. Oh, no. I don't know. I stand. Stan's and potato buns are good. Just that they eat a lot of salt with very little bread. Yeah. And bell peppers. Yeah, well, if, if you guys follow us at all, you know that Mrs. Backwoods has no tolerance for any kind of bell peppers. <laughs> I thought it was really, really good. Like I said, be be real easy with the salt there. Um, I probably could have left that out altogether. So I would suggest that maybe if you're going to make this recipe, do that uh, yourself. Just leave out the salt. Or only put garlic salt on the outside coffee. But... Hmm. It's a very, very creamy grilled cheese. That's for sure. I guess that's why it's, it's pretty famous. Or, uh, and everybody's, you know, trying to leak the recipe. And, yeah, I just had a, a bite almost all with just ham. And the ham was very salty. So, I think that's where most of the salt that's given Mrs. Backwoods or salt overload came from the ham. Um, we'll talk about that real quick. Is When I went to the store yesterday, the day before, to get the ingredients for this, there was no, hardly no ham, period, in the grocery store. I mean, it had turkey. They had a little bit of chicken. No ham. Uh, didn't have any ham in the deli. Didn't have any ham in the uh, stuff that was already already uh, prepared. And Bella wants to come up and, and uh, say hi to everybody. We're done eating now. So, it's Cabela. She's 
She's now uh, going on seven months old. She'll be seven months old next week on the 27th. She's slowly starting to get her morphe colors. Slowly, she's lightening up on her ears. <laughs> I said morphe, didn't I? She said morphe. I said yorkie. Oh, well, she's three quarters yorkie, one quarter Maltese. Morky. So she is a morphe, but she's slowly starting to lighten up. And like I've showed you guys, if you watched any of our latest videos, she loves water. Um, some of the lightning is giving her a little scare right now. But she's starting to get a little bit lighter on her ears, her face, her legs. So uh, just like Makita, who was the star of our show for the last 10 years, and just about in every single video that we did, She's going to change from from uh, really black and tan to uh, about a year old. Uh, she should be fully changed, and she's starting to do that now. She's starting to get some gold and some little bit of white and gray. Uh, right now, she just wants to chew on everything. And she's finally starting to uh, notice the lizards, all the lizards that we have in the backyard, starting to chase them around a little bit. So, and as you can see her right now, she's starting to sniff people food. I haven't given her any people food yet, so um, we'll let her go back now. So, all right, guys, I'm going to let Mrs. Backwoods have a little break here. I'm going to turn the camera around, and uh, I'll answer some of your questions myself here. Just give me a second to move the camera. Hopefully, the storm is slacking off a little bit so this is live so bear with me here um need to move things around here a little, a little bit um this can help me out a little bit. Can you switch this computer around 380 or 180? There's plenty of room on that extension cord. No, no, this cord. There's plenty of room on that. Okay. Chair. All right, guys. Appreciate your patience. Um, everybody coming on tonight. Sit down here. This this live guys. This is just live, so bear with me. Let's lower this thing down a little bit. Okay. Get some glasses on here. So humid out here, my glasses are all fogged up. Yeah, uh, answer some questions real quick for you guys. All right, and give a couple shout outs. Appreciate it. Uh, Jeff Riffle, eat a lot of salt, very little bread. Yeah, I guess Mr. Fact was said that earlier. Uh, Bobby Kenton, maybe use powder instead of garlic salt. That would be awesome. I didn't use garlic salt. I used garlic, fresh garlic and salt. Uh, Emily Walsh, I have the same dog. You have a Morky there, Emily? Uh, best dog you ever owned. Um, 
Nikita was the best dog I ever owned. I'm not sure how this one we have right now is going to turn out. Uh, but she's young and still needs a lot of training. She's been a little bit more of a challenge to train than Nikita, our first one, who was a 50-50 uh, Yorkie Maltese. This one's a three-quarter Yorkie, one-quarter Maltese. So I guess they relaxed that. Uh, one quarter. Okay, so she's she's your uh, Mrs. Backwoods. Of course, she's got to correct me. She is a Yorkie Morky um, mix. So that means she's three quarter Yorkie, one quarter Maltese. Morky. Yeah, but a Morky is a half. Okay, don't argue. Um, Jeff Rebel says uh, she loves water. I think she's part duck. Uh, she'll run out there in the day. I'm pouring down rain if the lungs are not lightning and just run around there in it. Um, Tim Peace, appreciate you, buddy. You see, we got your plaque that you sent us over there, right here in the background. Uh, Tim, appreciate that. He says, uh, in the Smoky Mountains last week, hit up the lodge tour. Uh, hopefully you told him about the uh, the Backwoods Gourmet Channel um, up there when you're there. You know they they do um, kind of sponsor the channel. They send us anything that we ask for from their uh, from their inventory. They don't pay us a dime to say anything about any of their products. And if you've gone back and looked at our channel, you'll see that. When they make something that don't work, we'll tell you it don't work. Actually, we use their lodge cooking all for a freaking motor, you know. So, um, at any rate, uh, they don't pay us a dime to say anything about their products, but they do send us whatever we want. So, if you guys want to see us review a uh, lodge product that we haven't used here yet on the channel, uh, leave me a comment here now or after this renders out, you can leave me a comment on anything that you, that we haven't done before. I mean, we've done most of their skillets, most of their Dutch ovens. We did the um, the eight and the ten shallow. We got the, the twelve inch deep, and we got the ten shallow. Thought about getting the uh, ten deep and doing a, a review on that. We had the fish pan, almost all their uh, grilled griddle combos, the uh, new black lot. Uh, 12 inch and the new black clock griddle. We've done reviews on those. So, if there's any of the other things that you haven't seen on our channel, and remember to click on that channel page, you know, just click on our, our my little picture off to the side of the video over there. That's going to take you to the channel page, or you just click on the backwards gourmet channel. That'll take you to the channel page. Then you can click the videos tab, which will be like right up somewhere like right there at the channel page videos and I'll show you all of our videos because um, YouTube's not going to going to suggest all of our stuff it's, it's not going to happen so but everything we have is over there on the channel page and um you can go back and look at all like 360, I don't know, 68, something like that, 368 videos that we've done since way back in 2009. All right. Okay. Let me get back over here to the comments to try to uh, uh, respond to some of them. Emily Walsh says she taught her dog how to swim today. Um, yeah, I need to I need to work on that with Cabela too. I, I mean, I think all dogs already know how to swim uh, by instinct. But Makita loved the water, and she would just, but she would not go in the pool for nothing. And I'm kind of glad of that because I know other friends of mine that have had dogs actually drown in the pool because they'll get in there and they don't know how to get out. But if she could wade in. Uh, if I waited out in anywhere fishing or whatever, she was right behind me. So, 
you know, I would suggest if you want to teach them how to swim, do it in some place they can wait in. I actually put Makita in the pool uh, mm -hmm. several times, and she couldn't wait to get out. But I wanted to make sure if she did get in, she knew where the steps are so she could get out on her own. All right. Uh, right here, we got some couple things going on back and forth uh, here. So John Daigle asked a great question. Appreciate you, John Daigle, uh, one of our members over there. And that's giving me a chance to remind you guys to down below uh, down below our videos, there's a new button called Join Button. And you can click that Join Button and for a very, very, very affordable price, become a member of our channel. That's going to give you some extra perks. It's uh, not only going to give you a, uh, like just like John Daigle here in the slide chat, it's going to highlight his message to me it's also going to show a little uh icon or a sticker next to his name that is going to highlight and make me notice and his name and also in every comment that you leave if you're a member it's going to be highlighted in my comment section so those are going to be the first people that i respond to or the people that are actually members and uh, just like john daigle it's it's two. It's dollar ninety nine cents a month. Okay, less than twenty five dollars a year, and that that little bit of money adds up and helps us to buy the uh, the food and materials that we use here on our channel every day. Keep trying to give you guys great comment. Plus, you know, we're trying to travel around, do a lot of stuff outdoors, uh, and you know, all that costs money. And you know, I still work a regular job. So for, for the most part, I do this, I do this for you guys and make all this content for free. I don't, I don't really, you know, it's, it's kind of a break even situation at the most with the way YouTube pays now, now these days. Uh, I mean, every once in a while we do make a little bit of money, but most all of it gets reinvested back right back into the channel to, uh, to try to provide great content for you guys. All right. So let me jump right back in here again. Uh, uh, Emily Wass says, yeah, the little pup would drown if I put her in the pool. I just took it to the river and they're about knee-deep water. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're going to teach a dog to swim, I would start them out somewhere they can wait out and uh, teach them how to get to the bank first. You do that several times and then if you do have a pool like we do uh i would at least put them in there and teach them where the steps are so the least they can get to where they can keep their you know their head above water especially without little dog i mean these labs they can just jump out over the side but little dogs can't really do that Um, all right, guys. So we've been on here for an hour and seven minutes. So I hope you guys enjoyed this first live cook that we're doing tonight. This is kind of a kind of a test run. It was kind of a test run here to see how everything would go. Try to do something simple for you. But uh, hopefully... You know, we, we've changed our video, our new video releases to Sunday because that's when YouTube says most of you guys are watching the Sunday and Monday. And we were doing Saturday and Sunday. I don't know if that's really working or not. Uh, let me go back to here and uh, turn this uh, glass off because it's not gas or anything. see. Turn that tank off. Um, and it's still pouring down there. It's still pouring down there. It's typical summertime in Florida. It's June. And um, man, the day has been really active. As you go. Okay, Becky Dupree still wants me to do um, 
SOS, which is uh, shit on shingle, which is uh, chip beef and gravy. Uh, I love that stuff. Yeah, uh, bacon. Uh, really do, really do love it. I love it. You know, I eat it back in the Marine Corps, and we didn't eat. You know, when I was in Marine Corps, I didn't have it that much. Whenever, whenever they did, I always loved it. You know, I mean, uh, that on a good piece of toast was awesome. So, anyway, let me try to respond. Mike, uh, uh, is Cabela's cast iron any better than any other brands? Cabela's cast iron is all made in China also. Every bit of it. Okay. So, yeah, Cabela's cast iron is not. Is, I don't own any, but I've watched a lot of reviews on it. I've seen it in their stores. It's it's all made in China. I don't know if it's any better than the Walmart Ozark Ozark Trail or the uh, the off brand that is probably about the same quality as the one that Academy Sports sells. Probably even made by the same company, just branded different. Um, Academy Sports sells that. Uh, the only one don't sell their own brand, as far as I know, is Bass Pro. Bass Pro only sells the Lodge products. They do have some special lines of, of uh, products that they sell that are exclusive to Bass Pro. Uh, some of the Wildlife Series and some of that. Uh, you can get them in the Lodge store. You can get them online or you can get them at Bass Pro. Uh, like the old, uh, that one right there has a bass, has a bass molded into the bottom of it. I got that one at Bass Pro about 25 years ago. And I got that one, and I got a smaller one that had a duck in it. And uh, Stan Irvin that's in the chat right now, I traded him the, the duck one for this little BSR speed box that's right there. Right. So if you guys got any technical questions about cast iron, Stan Irvin that's in the chat right now, he is uh, he is a reseller or a collector, a reseller of cast iron, a restorer. Uh, if you got questions about your cast iron history or how to restore it perfectly, hit him up, and um, he can answer your questions probably a whole lot better than I can. Whenever I have a question on you know history of something like this gate mark Griswold so called had, I went to him. Because he has a lot of experience at that. So Stan, I appreciate you coming in here tonight. Hey, he says it sounds like hell. No, that's just just like uh, Forrest Gump said. That's a great big old fat rain. All right, great big old fat rain. All right, guys. So appreciate you all showing up. Um. And uh, watching this live, first live cook. So hope everybody stays safe um, wherever you're at. And we'll try to, uh, you know, we got 50 people in the uh, in the chat right now, 46 likes. So if you don't mind, hit that like button before you leave. Help out the videos. Um, Okay, uh, Stan Irvin, maybe it's Stan Irwin, I don't know. I believe it was Stan Irvin, I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of people with similar names in here, what he's saying, but um, at any rate, Robert Highgate, I wish you got on sooner, geez, he's he, he just coming in, another, another uh, great subscriber there. Um, yeah, well, it's after 10 o'clock uh, here, Eastern Time. So, you know, we're going to try to do these on Mondays between 8 and 9 o'clock when all you guys are on uh, on YouTube. But at any rate, got to jump off here. Got to go to work tomorrow like a lot of you other guys. So uh, appreciate you watching, coming on, seeing us do this first live cook. We'll try to get this down, uh, show it to you a little bit better. And uh, maybe we'll do something a little more complicated than just a grilled cheese sandwich. So 
Appreciate everybody. So until uh, next time, thanks for watching Backwoods Gourmet. Please like the video, subscribe, and check out all of our videos on the channel page. We'll see you next time.